Assuming her burst is online, Miko would have to swap in, use her skill three times, then use her burst, and then have to use her skill three more times. This eats a- No, no, why? Why don't people get this? Okay, so I'm gonna explain this once again because Vos, you've got this completely wrong. Alright, so there are a lot of things that are wrong in Vos's video, so I'm sort of just sort of gonna debunk it here and provide you a bit of more practical insights into Yamiko. I'm an avid demo here, I'm just gonna use it as a frame counting software tool. If you'd like this video, let me know in the comment section, I'll just make it available via Google so that you can confirm it for yourself. So let's quickly get into it. The first thing with Yamiko is obviously the totems and their casting time. So let's just see, how long does it take for Yamiko to cast her totems? Well, there you can see at the, that exact frame, uh, she disappears and there we go she's gonna cast everything and yeah she reappears looking really, really good and you can see uh, her elemental burst is still off cooldown so I cannot cast any of her abilities I can't do anything in this moment until right there when the elemental burst comes online if you've got frame perfect timing you should be able to cast the elemental burst there um, so effectively it takes about 1.9 seconds using the frame counting software uh, to sort of um, cast all of her abilities in practice what this means is that you have about one second leeway when you switch into yai because for that one second you cannot swap onto any other character so let me sort of tell you uh, demonstrate what i mean here as you can sort of see here's kokomi and there we go we're now going to swap into yai miko at this point so Oh, I didn't record it. Oh, well. Uh, so here it is. We swap into Yamiko. We are on a character switching cooldown. So for this one second, what are we going to do with what? Yeah, we're going to cast one totem. We're going to cast another totem. So almost Yamiko herself, as you can see, the Q is going to come online almost for that entire one second duration that you are forced to be on the field, that you cannot do anything else with any other character you can already cast two of your totems. So the argument that you're using excessive field time to cast all three of the totems is kind of a bit silly. Right, so the next thing that Vara said is that Yamiko has one of the longest charge attacks in the game. I absolutely don't agree. So at the time, yeah, you can see it says 40. So let's quickly skip to the time, uh, 40.0. All right, so here it is. Here's Yamiko. And you guys can trust me, I did do the frame counting like pretty pretty precise you can see that's the start of her casting time uh, there it is as well so if you don't do anything with Yai, if you just hold down the button it will take about 2.5 seconds in order to cast her entire charge attack and that is very very long however if you do it the giga chat yai way it'll only take 0.9 seconds so i'm just going to quickly let this play out and watch what happens Yep, as you can, guys can see, it's pretty, pretty simple, it's pretty, pretty sweet, and that's just how fluidly you can play with Yai. This is all about skill expression, about skill execution, so once again, Vaz, you're completely talking rubbish, because you don't know how to play Yai Miko with proper animation cancelling. Uh, just for some comparatives that I did here on screen, uh, Kokomi takes about one second, Ayaya takes about, well, exactly about 0.9 seconds, and of course, Shenhe and other polearm users uh, conveniently can do it about roughly in 0.7 seconds, um, because they've just got like a faster animation. This is why Hu Tao charge attack cancelling is so, so cool. Right, so skipping a bit forward, so let's go and talk a bit about her elemental burst. One of the things a lot of people don't know about Yamiko is that her elemental burst, assuming you activate or get like all four of the little thunderbolts, the initial one plus the one that's sort of consumed by the three totems, is that her elemental burst carries no ICD. In other words, every single shot that you're going to hit onto the enemies will apply an instance of Electro. So if you've applied the Dendro of a Quicken Aura onto enemies, you're going to get four aggravate shots off. And that is just so, so strong, especially in a wide AoE. This is what makes Yamiko's burst so, so strong. And this is why it is 90 cost. Also, it gives Raiden a lot of resolve and so on, but that's a, a separate topic. Topic. The other thing about the elemental burst is that you can very, if you're fast enough, you can sort of cancel out here and then you can really start casting all three of her totems. I've sort of shown this in previous videos as well. And effectively, before all of the four um, Tango, whatever, Thunderbolts, whatever they're called, um, hits the enemies, you should be able to cast all of your totems. This is good Yai gameplay and this allows you to then quickly then move on to the next stage. A lot of people say, well, oh, it's E E E Q E E. Well, that's not how you play Yai. You set up your totem, 
items you go to your other characters you layer your buffs you activate your elemental burst and then you hit very very hard with all of the buffs stacked onto yai preferably you want to do it just before your first totem expires and then you reset your totems then you move on to your other characters and so on this is the way in which you should be playing yai and if you do it fast enough then you'll realize that the field time is actually a lot less than you would be than you sort of would believe Right, so the final thing that I want to quickly cover with Yai is the fact that a lot of people say that, oh my god, you know, she doesn't have any iframes during her E casting and, and all of that nonsense. The point about Yai is that you can, like I sort of showed you on screen, you can weave in dash cancels at the end of your totems. This means that if you time it well enough, you wouldn't even need any iframes because you get those iframes while you dash around at the end. And of course, you do recover a bit of stamina as you... Uh, cost your e ability even though it's not negligible it is there in game and i think a lot of people don't understand that yai miko is not a character that you use to dodge at on at the moment you use her to dodge preemptively and that is what yai is so good um, she gives you the tools to space around the map and to position in order for you to cast your next set of abilities. So, for instance, if you take a, a look at a character like Sucrose, Sucrose wants to swirl in front of her. And this is unlike Kazuha that swirls at the point of contact wherever he's standing. So what's cool about Yamiko is you can zip around and then you can put Sucrose in a position, especially if enemies around you in a circle, where you're facing them from the front and then you can swirl them. So I've shown this in previous videos and so on. But this this is what Yai is good for in my previous 2.5, 2.4 patch, Genshin patch 2.45, whatever videos on Yai, I sort of showed you how to properly space with Yai in anticipation of enemy attacks. And if you do it well enough and you add that extra dash at the end of sort of every casting of a totem, then it's very, very unlikely that you'll get hit. In my personal experience, um, at a C0 level and at a C6 level with Yai Miko, she's very often the one that has the most health out of all of my other team members, precisely because you've got this fluidity and movement and spacing potential. And that is what she's so good at. But once again, this is a high level construct and people don't really think about Yai like this. So how should you play Yai? Well, let's quickly get into the Spiral Abyss. Now on my channel, there are C0 F2P friendly videos. In this video, I'm just gonna use my C6 Yai. So immediately I positioned, so it's easy for my Nahida to cast her E ability. I don't have to swivel the camera around. I stack and layer all my buffs. I take out the enemies. Uh, all of them are taken out. I can go back to Nahida. So this is how you play Yai. It's not E, 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 Q, E, E, E. It's E, 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 buffs, then do expend all of your other cooldowns, and then you use your Q ability. This is good practice with Yai Miko, and this will allow you to clear things fast and once again just want to point it out you can do this very effectively at a c0 level as well i have a c0 yeah i know it so once again very very good positioning tag all the enemies in instantly e into q into the header i frame with kujosaurus elemental burst using alt tab getting all the enemies health done uh, sort of now setting up for my totems take out the enemies in the background as you can see here look at how i'm using my positioning how i'm using the ice skill even though it took a bit of time to cast it got me rapidly into position to go and fight the next wave and this is what the fun is about Yaimiko being able to strategize how and where you want to position. One thing that you would have also noticed there is that I did not immediately triple E after casting my elemental burst. I'm going to do the exact same here. So what you'll see is we're just going to wait for a little the dinosaur to come down and now immediately we're going to sort of um, trigger Yaimiko's buff. We're going to hit the enemy, go to Nahida, uh, quickly take him out and now we can sort of cast our um, totems. Yai is done and now it is right in show in time and we can win this is how you play yai at the highest level thanks for watching cheers